Steve, this uh, mission initiative, Pursue Peace on Earth, has at its very core an enduring principle to pursue peace. It also has as its foundation uh, the call to share Christ's peace. And it seems as if God's been bringing all of these understandings together so that we can understand how critical Pursue Peace on Earth is. Tell me a, a little bit about what you think this means in the life of disciples as well as in the life of congregations. Sure. I think it's so much a part of the witness and message of Jesus Christ that somehow has been lost over the centuries that it's very critical that we lift it up. And the whole phrase, pursue peace on earth, is important. A lot of times people conceptualize peace as something that's always in the distant future or something that will never really be experienced on this earth. In heaven I'll have peace, but not on this earth. And again, a few passages of Scripture are used to justify that kind of view. But if we look at the whole witness of Scripture, it talks about a coming time of justice and peace, harmony, balance, and well-being on earth. The whole creation enjoying the blessings of God's peace. The Hebrew uh, Scriptures refer to it as shalom the fullness of peace, not just the absence of conflict, but the well-being of all living creatures, of all living systems, the well-being of earth itself. And so this particular mission initiative catches up that whole vision, not just some aspects of peace, not just peace for me, which is an important part of the gospel experience. I have peace in my heart, but as we look at the life and we look at the ministry of Jesus, we know that Jesus actually engaged, actively engaged in creating communities that were just, more inclusive, and in which people experienced peace that was totally different than what they had experienced in their other um, activities in the world. So that's what we're talking about is that whole vision of peace that Jesus spoke about, that he gave his life for, and to which God said yes through the resurrection and the coming of the Holy Spirit, which in the book of Acts, it describes the gospel as the peace of God and the peace of Christ. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, there's a proclamation. He, referring to Christ, is our peace. And it's not just talking about inner peace. It's talking about the dividing walls of hostility between groups of people coming down. It's talking about reconciliation on earth. So this initiative refers to all the dimensions of Christ's peace as he taught it and as he demonstrated it and as we have come to understand it through the witness of the Holy Spirit. Yes, and, and we, you've talked about this mission initiative being Christ's uh, mission of justice and peace. Mm -hmm. And there's a positioning of justice and yeah. then peace. Can you clarify for us why justice is so important uh, in the whole process of peacemaking? Sure. Um, I always try, I don't know if I'm always successful, but I always try to consciously say justice and peace because I believe we have to work at the injustices in the world in order to eventually have lasting 
peace. Maybe you've heard the phrase, no justice, no peace, N-O. If there's no justice, there's no real peace. So what do we mean by that? The lack of justice or injustice in the world is referring to those situations where people don't have a sense of their inherent worth or they're entrapped by attitudes and mindsets and systems that are perpetuated and reinforced by others who have privilege, who have power, who have resources that keep them from having the opportunities that others enjoy. Those are injustices <laughs> that exist in the world. Our understanding of peace tells us that those situations need to be addressed in order for conditions of well-being for all people to be enjoyed. And so we do the work of justice in order to create the conditions that become lasting or enduring peace. Yes. And so sometimes we hear about individuals and congregations being involved in issues of justice and peacemaking. Uh, rarely do we hear about congregations or many people in a congregation moving out into those arenas that bring justice and peace into communities. And so I guess the challenge would be, as we think about mission initiatives, not just for individuals, but the imperative for congregations to live yes. the holistic mission of Christ, yes. then what would that look like in a congregation? <laughs> well, well, one of the um, advantages of the mission initiatives is that they point a direction but they don't attempt to define for congregations what they should specifically do, because that varies from congregation to congregation. It depends on where you are, what kind of neighborhood uh, you're seeking to address in terms of sharing the gospel. It depends on who's in your congregation, what, what gifts, what assets, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about just physical assets, I'm talking about people's experience, training, um, other resources that they may have. What's in the congregation as represented in the lives of people that equips them for ministry? And so you match that to needs and opportunities in the community and you have a particular expression of a mission initiative such as Pursue Peace on Earth. With that said, I'll say one of my favorites is in the congregations that have organized peace clubs for children and youth. And they've intentionally created groups where there is uh, social diversity, economic diversity, there are dif different ethnicities represented there and they are creating an environment in which kids feel safe and they can talk about their problems and they learn the greatest commandments of Jesus to love God, love your neighbor. They learn about a different way of living in the world that's not depend dependent on just getting back at someone or perpetuating revenge in order to have respect in the community. Those are tangible expressions, not only of the mission initiatives, and particularly the mission initiative of Pursue Peace on Earth. Those are expressions of the kingdom of God breaking in. I mean, it's, it's seeable, <laughs> it's touchable. You can go in and experience it and get a glimpse of what the kingdom of God is all about. So that's one expression that I've seen of Pursue Peace on Earth that's especially inspiring and encouraging. This weekend, um, 
as I was sharing in a mission center conference, in fact, both of us were sharing in that mission center conference, and we were talking about the mission. Uh, there was one individual who is a farmer who inherited land. He has good land. It's fertile land. It's rich land. And as he thought about the things that we were talking about, the mission initiatives, he got up and made a commitment that he was going to set aside some of his land and he would cultivate it and plant it as a community garden because all around his land, there were people who are hungry and, and children who, who feel the pain of, of hunger at night and he was going to invite the community to come in and pick what they need. That's a very tangible expression of the mission initiative, Pursue Peace on Earth. And when he shared that dream, others started responding and saying, we're going to come help you. We're going to help you plow and we're going to help you plant. And so it had that invitational aspect to it that we were talking about earlier. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, Steve, as, as people look to this initiative, not only to live it out in their lives and as their congregation embrace this initiative, uh, and as people begin to recognize that they can give directly to this initiative mm -hmm. to further the pursuit of peace on earth, uh, what do you see happening? Well, hopefully there are more and more peace clubs and there are more and more community gardens, and there are more and more opportunities for people to come and experience peace so that they do understand that there is an alternative vision to the way life is in most places. I see congregations going deeper and deeper into the heart and mind of Jesus Christ and beginning to understand through their own experience why he was so passionate about this particular emphasis that he had picked up from the prophetic scriptures in the Old Testament that, that was so motivating to him that he embraced it as his mission and then began to demonstrate what it was all about. I see congregations being signal communities, bright lights that draw people to come and see what the kingdom of God looks like and, and feels like. And that in and of itself becomes a blessing to any community where a congregation is pursuing the whole mission of Jesus Christ in that fashion. Yes, that's the good news of the gospel. And so, my brothers and sisters, we've been talking about Christ's mission as articulated in three of the mission initiatives, invite people to Christ, which is Christ's mission of evangelism, abolish poverty and, and suffering, which is Christ's compassionate ministries, and the mission initiative of pursue peace on earth, which is Christ's uh, mission of justice and peacemaking. And next we'll talk about how to equip individuals and disciples to serve and to go forth in Christ's mission.